Good morning. Um, just for Kevin's note, I'm into my sixth year here, um, but it feels like a lot longer. That's good. I love my job. I'm passionate about this city. It is a huge part of my life. I want Bradford to succeed, and uh, I'm relentless in the pursuit of that. Today I'm going to talk about city plan and producer city, an economic concept behind it. I've got quite a lot of slides, which is my style, but I go quite quickly through them, so hang on. They're visually just to prompt the discussion as you move along. I'm fantastically well supported, both by a very good chief exec, Tony Reeves, the staff that work with me within the department, and there's great political leadership that has supported key projects all the way through my time that has been here. The department itself works across a whole range of activity, from lending books, millions of them, to looking after 57,000 streetlights, to taking 3,000 empty homes back into use over the last three years, to delivery of six million school meals cooked and served over a year. Economic development is a core purpose of any council. We take that very, very strongly. But there isn't a huge amount of statutory acts to support that. So what we've tried to do is total regeneration. So the making of a school meal, or the delivery of a library book, or the creation of a tourism industry, it's all about regeneration. It's all about repositioning. It's all about remaking. So where have we come from? Well, we've come from wool. Where will we go? That is a question that ourselves and many other cities like us have asked. You've worked in these cities. For me, my model, the Revive to Thrive model, is what I'd like to use as a journey through this presentation. The decline stage of any city is hard. It's difficult. It breaks relationships. People can disengage, business can disengage, people can lose their roots. The first stage, and what Bradford has done well, is to stabilise that, put in and instigate upward spirals to revive. Bradford has gone through that process a number of times. We have, yesterday you saw the bear, Bradford bouncing back. Um, we had Bradford to a surprising place. We've had the birth of a new city, and there are layers. In many respects, it's like training. Layers that you build in a city, layers of regeneration. Success is built upon that knowledge and that corporate knowledge that stays within the organisation, stays within the district, stays within the partnerships, stays within the kind of DNA of the place. But the key to it is to try and punch through from revive to thrive. And that's harder. Breaking through that level is important. And it is competitive. Yes, we don't compete with Leeds, we collaborate with Leeds. We collaborate with the rest of the city region as an economic functional area. But we do compete. We want to be a great city. So, what is the rule book for that? Well, I'm obsessed with quality. I'm obsessed with implementation. And it is competitive. And as my dad used to say to me, if you're going to fight, fight with your brain, fight with your brawn, fight with your brothers. I had two sisters. So I fought with them. Um, so it's really important. We've had many plans. 1956, the Wardley Plan. Shopping centre and arcade. Mechanical car park, double level bus station. And making cities take time. They take a lot of time. But they cannot take too long. It took maybe 20 years to deliver against the Wardley Plan. And then in 2003, we had the Alsop plan. And this was a clever plan. It reshifted, I think, the centre of the city. But the architecture is difficult. It asked too much of the grain of the city. It got rid of too much of it from critical. However, it created a vision. Now we're at the stage where we're talking about the next city plan. And there will be citizens there. People will ask, Another plan? Why don't you just make a great city? But you need a plan. To take plans forward, you need to get into the detail. And we got into the detail of the Alsop plan. 
It was embedded within the planning process. The detail came through. But fundamentally, what we had to do was we had to deliver. The political decision was taken to go on site at the height of the recession. And this was brave. Here we see where the pavilion is, City Hall, where we're actually over here, you can't see it. We went on site for two years, and two of the hardest winters England had. And you're in the ground. We moved 20,000 kilometres of utilities, and you dug up the city. And yes, people said, you're building a puddle in the park. It'll be full of shopping trolleys. What you use it for, and why don't you do this? And actually, what it has done has been immense. And I'll show you. In 2009, we were here. You know, the three buses that are there on what is Channing Way doesn't reflect the usual 13 buses that were there on Channing Way. Google got lucky. We had an island, the police station, the magistrate's court, and we had a ring, a collar of, of, of traffic. We had part of the Wardley plan still in place here. And we move on, and we create a great public space. More than that, this is what I think we've done. This is a snapshot from a Flickr site. It's only one social media, but if you can see, this is where the photographs are being taken. And what are they taking the photographs of? They're taking the photographs of the city, the proud city, the city where people enjoy. Apple Eye Photo takes photographs of, well, can sort photographs of people and places, face recognition. Fundamentally, to be a tourist in your own city is really, really important. To be a tourist in your own city and be free in that city is even more important. To be able to take a photograph of your city and be proud of it and then tell others is fundamentally part of being, I think, a citizen of a future city. We've got lots to do. We've had series and stages, as all cities have, where actually people can think of it as being sometimes a bit of a pantomime. Heroes and villains. Why isn't the scheme being taken forward? Why is it taking so long? What is the problem? Is there failure? Well, we've moved on. Westfield will be on site in the second half of this year. We've moved on in relation to the Odeon across from City Park as well. So we get through those things and we move on. And when the city's got through both of those and moved on, then actually we've, we've, we've raised again to another level. I'm going to move back to here. So you punch through. A key part of this punching through is the SML XL, XXL, small, medium, large, extra large. Whether the extra, extra large is working with national government on the city deal, ensuring that skills, transport, investment, combined authority, all works for the city and the city region, and down to the very small, the management of the city park, it all has to work and all the scales in between. And that is another key piece, key spine as to how I want to approach the development of the city. In order to move through that, you have to remake, you have to re-engage, you repair and reroute. Not only repairing the physical fabric, but actually repairing the city and its citizen relationship to that place. What is Bradford? Well, Bradford's like many other cities. It's also very different. We have a growing population. 20% of our population is Pakistani. 10% of our households are overcrowded. Actually, we've had a rise in youth claimants, like most cities. We've got an 8.3 billion economy. This is our population growth. 50,000 since the 2001 census. Expected at least another 45,000 by 2021. Makeup of our city. More people are out of work, but they're looking for a job. Since the recession. So, the economically inactive has roughly stayed the same. The amount of employed has contracted. What you need to remember here in terms of economically inactive, if you're a growing city, you need parents, and you also have pensioners. So they're included within the economically inactive. But what Bradford has is a unique position in which it's growing in terms of its population. So we call this running to stand still. Because what we have to introduce is more jobs into the economy. So by 2021, 
we need 10,000 roughly extra more jobs. To reach the national employment rate here, we'll double it at least. So, Bradford's a big economy. Leeds and Bradford, two cities, one place, is fundamental. In the Superconnected Cities programme, we, Bradford, lead for the delivery of that with Leeds in their city as well. The two cities together could quite easily be England's third city. So it's not about a fight with Leeds. It's about a place on the national stage. Our GVA growth is growing. We need to understand this. We need to understand why that's there. We need to look at the and analyse the data in relation as what that makes that up. What type of growth is that? Is that productivity? Is that pricing? Is that transactions? What is it? It's positive, but we need to understand it, and that's part of the job, understanding the economy as we move forward. So, if we want to talk about the city as a whole, and where we go, this is the city centre. 170 hectares of land. This is also the boundary of the growth zone. The growth zone is established within the city centre. Rate rebate, fast track planning, apprenticeship training agency, skills, super connected uh, broadband, a whole package of incentives, and it does have a boundary. It's the boundary that existed all the way through since the all sub master plan. Why do we need a new city plan for Bradford? Well, we need an operational plan. We need a strategic plan. It's over 10 years since we actually sat down and put together both for the city. When I was interviewed for my position, which I take to be work for the council and try and turn around the economy and district of this, for the, for the council, I should say, Mervyn King was on the front page of The Economist. Not the best time to take a job of this nature. A year later, exactly a year later, the front page of The Economist was, well, Lehman Brothers had gone bust and everything in the world had been thrown at it, kitchen sink and all the quantitative easing you could find. And we're in a situation of real global shock. And there's a lag in that, we understand, and we've had a double dip recession. So why now? Why plan now? Well, you wouldn't plan then, but you would build a project. And City Park, I always consider, you know, it is our Hoover Dam. So, why now? Well, we're driven to deliver. And when I say we, that's not just us. Clearly it's not. It's the chamber, it's the college, it's the university, it's businesses, it's the community, it's the total team regeneration. What have we delivered? Well, we've delivered transport schemes, we've delivered skills schemes. Economy, we've delivered on place, we've delivered on people, and we're pushing that prosperity. So we are pushy, there's no doubt about it. We need to be pushy. When I went to architecture school, nobody told me that actually architecture doesn't exist without jobs. And actually what it doesn't exist, it doesn't exist without an economy. The city can exist, but it wants to exist and it thrive. So jobs are fundamentally important. The economy is key. This is a diagram. The first step in the city plan. What does it mean? Well, it's not about building strap lines, but actually what we want to do is build a city that you're proud of. When we've talked to, you know, all sorts of groups of people within this city, from the really young to businesses, they'll say they want a city that they're proud of. Everybody says they want a city that they're proud of. Now make it. The city, and in our position, we all sorts of issues are put to us, and then people seek interventions. Our natural position is to create programmes and projects that respond to it. Some guiding principles have seen set out here. You know, we're a team of teams that the librarian or the economist are equal. The youth worker, like last night, to the planner, equal. We all have a part to play. It must be simple, it must be holistic. We work across the scales. And we need to test ourselves on what that character that place will need to be in the future. It needs to be safe. It needs to be beautiful. It needs to be successful. So I'm now going to go in to how you move through the position 
to get to reposition where I think we can get to reposition. And that is, how do we earn our living? Stuart Gulliver asked us this question. Then Lord Heseltine asked us this question. How do we earn our living? The producer city. Create, make and trade. But what does that actually mean? Is this boosterism? No, it's not boosterism. Absolutely, it's built on the foundations of our past and the place for our future. I think we really need to keep one eye on the past. We need to keep one eye on the future, two eyes in the present. And we have to back what we're good at. So what is the producer city? Well, the producer city describes a district economy in which businesses create, make and trade. And this is an opportunity to promote a distinct identity that is economy-led. It's predicated on the analysis of business. That's important. And employment that has revealed demonstrable strengths in key industries and businesses all across the district. The reality of the producer city is way more than just manufacturing of physical things. Important. But it's about the creation and sharing of knowledge that brings about the production of new and improved goods and services. That is then capitalised by the ability to market and trade them in an increasingly global position. Bradford has a proud industrial heritage. It's there. You have heard so much about that. But actually, what that gives us is that we've applied new ideas. Two minutes. I'm going to push you for seven. I told you I was pushing. There's no point in me finishing two minutes. It will ruin my failing, but I think I just need to go on. Bradford is a proud industrial heritage, and uh, successive generations of migrants have built that. You know, I'm from Dublin. Came to England over 20 years. Great country. Made me. The chief exec of Morrison's left Ireland at the same time, both from the Republic of Ireland. Morrison's, Bradford Company, the council, the Bradford Council. So, we need to make the most of this. The challenge for us is to build upon these revealed strengths and to address our acknowledged weaknesses. But actually, we need to drive a more positive position. So how do we do it? We need to create the conditions. We need to make Bradford the best place to set up in business. We need to make knowledge work. We need to trade on our culture and enterprise. Now, what does this mean? Well, if you look at what we create and what we make and some key companies within it and what we make and what we trade against some key companies in it, there's a very rich foundation. If you take that forward, here's some names that you'll recognise, some, some logos. If you take that forward and look how it's underpinned by community infrastructure, it becomes very rich, ties it back to the neighbourhood. If you look at where our HQ is and where decisions are made, again, it becomes rich. That's a really distinct thing about Bradford. There's a lot of HQs here. And it goes across the district. We don't have an issue about actually city centre and outside of the city centre. It's all over. Now, clearly, there's an issue there in terms of the, the wealth of the city centre and how the city centre looks, because you've got HQs outside of the normal central business district area. And that's an urban issue. But let's look at the layers that are within there, the businesses that are within those sectors. They are substantial. There's over 15,000 business units. But we don't have a city centre that reflects that scale. If we look at the numbers of businesses there and in the areas in which they are at. Moving that forward, and we look at them, the scale of jobs. Clearly, you know, still a lot of jobs in construction, retail, professional services. But there's a richness within it. So, producer city facts. Read them for yourself. But it's important that what this is, is that there is absolute substance here. This is not a strap line. This is built upon the foundation of what the economy is. Now, to move on, to get to that position, to make sure that your thrive doesn't fall back to revive, you have to maintain a decade of delivery. And that is important. Without that, you'll slip back down. Thank you very much. I hope I was nearly on time.